Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I'm Donna, and I'm one of the worship pastors here at CCV. We're continuing our series called Trending, and today I have been tasked with the topic of prayer. Prayer is one of the spiritual practices we do as followers of Jesus, aka Christ-centered difference makers. And today, I wanna specifically talk about how prayer and music work hand in hand. Who likes music? Of course, everybody does. Let me tell you a little story. Growing up, I was big into musical theater. Anyone else? I started singing and performing at age five. I went to a performing arts school, did community theater, and basically lived and breathed Broadway. So pretty much all I listened to throughout elementary school was show tunes and then whatever my parents would play in the car or around the house, which varied from Christian music to Bob Marley. In seventh grade, things changed and I started caring a little bit more about what I wanted to listen to, but mostly whoever I liked at the time and what they listened to, if you know what I mean. There comes a time for all of us where we want to say and what's being played in the car, am I right? So back in the day, there were these things called boom boxes. I know, it's vintage. Ask your coaches, they know what I'm talking about. Mine was tight because not only did it have radio, but it had a CD player and then these two little cassette tape thingies in the front. I remember specifically turning the radio on to record my favorite songs on a blank cassette tape, and I would wait there all day and then hit it right when it came on, and that timing, it's important. But I would have that so that I could listen to my favorite songs over and over again whenever I wanted to. It was actually a lot of work. Anyway, after the boombox came, we had a Walkman, which are these handheld CD players that you could walk around with. But even those were kind of tricky because you could only listen to one CD at a time and you had to carry around a book of CDs if you wanted to swap it and listen to something else. Eventually, the iPod came out and forever changed how we listened to music. We would buy songs, EPs, or albums on iTunes and then you'd download it from there and put that onto your iPod. I actually have my first iPod with me. Look how cute. This is a work of art. It's even engraved on the back and it says, to Donna, love mommy and daddy. Everybody say, aww. aww. Okay, fast forward a couple of years and we have the iPhone. We can search, download, and stream anything we want instantly. We have the whole world at our fingertips. And this is both awesome and terrifying. Now here's the deal. Music is powerful. Music has the power to affect our mood for good or for bad. Music done right makes you feel something. Anyone here play sports? Show of hands. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I can't see you, but I would guess that there's a bunch of you on all of our campuses that do. I played basketball for four years, and what kind of music do you listen to when you're trying to warm up? It's not classical music. <laughs> no, you're listening to pump up songs that are hype, and the whole point is to get you energized and ready for the game. If it were anything else, it would throw you off, right? Now, how many of you have had that moment in time when you're down, feeling kind of low, and you intentionally choose to listen to something that makes you feel your feelings more? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know I have. I specifically remember a time in middle school getting into a fight with my mom, hiding away in my room, blasting complicated by Avril Lavigne and assuming the role of a misunderstood, oppressed punk rock girl. dramatic, I know. Looking back, I realize I probably could have gotten over it way sooner with a few deep breaths and a calm conversation. Why do we do this to ourselves? Well, listen, it's true what the phrase says, what goes in is what comes out. Turn to the person next to you and say, what goes in is what comes out. Literally whatever you consume is what you will poo. I know that's disgusting, but it literally is what it is. It's just straight facts. Luke 6, 45 says it like this. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Students, what you listen to matters. Even if you try to convince yourself that you only like this song because of the beat, you know it probably has lyrics that are a little sus. 
And yes, just hearing songs like that have an impact on you. You're literally storing information. How many of you have had a moment when you're in a random store, a song comes on, and you find yourself singing along, and then you catch yourself, and maybe even surprise yourself because you know the words and you don't even like that song? I've done that. And that's because your brain has heard it enough times and subconsciously stored it in your memory. What's the last part of that verse we just read? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. We're constantly storing information just by existing. So when it comes to the things that are trending in our life, who we follow, what we listen to, and what we consume matters. So how are music and prayer connected? Well, it turns out there's a whole genre of music called worship, which is really just prayers set to melody. It's another way of talking to God, but through creative expression. And talking to God is the point that I wanna make here. Part of how we grow as believers and followers of Jesus is by strengthening our relationship and our communication with Him. For some of you, I realize this might be a new concept and you're wondering what that looks like and where to even start. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter six to basically just keep it simple. There's no need for fancy words and He's not keeping track of our time. So you don't have to pray for 30 minutes. He doesn't care. God knows exactly what we need before we even ask. The point is that he wants us to. There's a famous book in the Bible called Psalms, and it's a huge collection of poetry and songs written to God. These songs were written to keep record of things that were happening at that time and to express gratitude and praise. There are also a bunch of songs in there that talk about pain and sadness, and all of this can be considered prayer. If there's anything we know about God, it's that he loved us so much that he gave his son Jesus to die for us so that we could be forgiven and have a relationship with him. He loves us and he wants our love in return. How do we love God? By loving the people around us and living out the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So where am I going with all of this? What you listen to matters because as we've already established, what goes in is what comes out. If you're filling your mind and heart with negative things, you're more likely to engage with the world in a more negative way. If you fill yourself with things that are good and true, you'll probably do more good. Does that make sense? Prayer helps us align our minds and hearts with Jesus and rewire the way that we think and behave. If you want to enhance your prayer life, or maybe you're just getting started, Try listening to worship music. If you don't have the words to say, listen to words that have already been written and are rooted in truth. These prayers set to melody are a great starting place to help you form what it is you wanna to say to God. It's also a great listening exercise to hear what it is God might be saying to you. My challenge for you this week is to fill your mind with truth. Make a playlist that lifts you up and brings you peace. Start your day with worship music to get your mind focused on things that are good and godly. Chances are that when you do, the rest of your day will look different for the better. And that's the goal, be different. And not in a weird way, don't be weird, but in a holy way. Holiness means to be set apart, not like the rest. And as Christ-centered difference makers, we need to be different. And that starts with our personal relationship with God. Here's one of my favorite verses that is a prayer from the book of Psalms. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be holy and pleasing to you, O God. Psalm 19, 14. It might sound a little old school, but it's deep, okay? And it's relevant. This is a prayer that was written from a place of seeking to be better and ultimately closer to God. It's my prayer that for each of you listening, watching, or even scrolling away through this message, that you would take a step forward towards Him by choosing to fill your mind and heart with truth. This week, start your day by listening to worship music. So for girls, while you're doing your skincare routine, makeup, hair, and for dudes, while you're splashing water on your face, calling it good, whatever that looks like, even if you don't pay attention to the words, they're still sinking in. So what are we gonna do? Make a playlist, a worship playlist, or follow our playlist we made for you on Spotify. 
And it's my hope that this practice will help your heart to eventually follow and that your prayer life would grow.